So I bought myself a new camera and it's terrible. Or am I terrible? So before I get on and tell you all about this wonderful camera that I purchased, just remember people are getting scammed on YouTube every single day and I don't want that to happen on this channel. So if you leave a comment on this video, which I really encourage you to do so, just be aware somebody might reply to it pretending to be me. They want to get you onto Telegram and they want to take your money. So simple, just remember this phrase, tit. Telegram is toxic. I will not try and get you on Telegram and if Telegram is mentioned in the comments of my video with somebody who looks like me, it's toxic, it's not me. I'm not trying to get you onto Telegram. I don't use Telegram, never have, never will. So there we go, don't get scammed today. So long-term viewers of this channel will know that I like to mix it up with my cameras, whether it's my Fuji GFX 50R or more recently, a Nikon Z7 II. Could be a Fuji X-T4 or it could be a dedicated infrared Fuji X-T3. Not to mention all of my film cameras from the Intrepid 4x5 film camera, which actually in fairness um, is more of an ornament. So, you know, I don't shoot this anymore, but still, had a lot of fun playing with it. And of course, how could we not forget the Hasselblad 501CM and Big Bertha, the panoramic Fuji GX617. So as you can see from those cameras, I do like to change it up a little bit and I like to restrict myself. I think that's one of the, uh, one of the ways I like to improve my photography is by adding restrictions to it, whether it's just going out with a digital camera and a single lens or whether it's shooting an old film camera. So how can we strip it back? How can we strip photography back even more than shooting a film camera, or something like this medium format Hasselblad? And more importantly, why would we want to strip it back? Well, we'll get into the second part of the question later on, but for now, how do we strip it back? One word for you, ladies and gentlemen, Polaroid. Actually, it's not Polaroid. This is a Lomography square camera that takes Fujifilm Instax, so instant square film. Oh. Oh. So landscape photography is made up of many different components. You've got light, composition, atmosphere, mood, texture, color, detail, <laughs> the list goes on and then you add to that all the post-processing possibilities, layer masking, basic adjustments, global adjustments, local adjustments, AI, sky replacement, the list goes on. And for me, it feels like photography sometimes can get overcomplicated, almost to the point that it feels clinical. So I thought that shooting instant film would be a great antidote to this feeling that I get from time to time. But if I can create images of worth with this camera, the Instax Instant Film, then that is massively gonna validate me as a photographer. Now, as much as I would love to make some fantastic images with this camera, unfortunately, it's not working out that way at all. And I am, um, for now at least, entirely blaming the camera. So firstly, the viewfinder on this camera is just awful. It's a rangefinder, and when you look through it, you can't see. You can't see what you're framing. There is a window within a window, a clear window and a slightly grayed out window. And then you've got to do that. Like basically when I frame things up with this camera, they don't come out how you expect them to come out. And I still haven't quite figured it out. I'm sure there is some method in the madness, but man, the amount of shots I've messed up because my framing has been way off. So yeah, that's one reason. Like it's very difficult for me using this viewfinder to tell whether or not these trees that I'm trying to photograph are actually going to be in frame and it's a very tight composition. It 
It's raining as well. I bet you this, uh, this camera's not weather sealed. <laughs> Obviously. So you focus this camera using a little slider on the side of the lens here and it's got indicated on it a few different distance measurements so if you slide it all the way to the right you are 0.8 meters so if you've got a close-up subject like a portrait for example then yes 0.8 in the middle you've got hmm, one to 2.5 meters <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's just, um, I thought that said five meters, so I just photographed those trees using the five meter. I'll have to reshoot that flipping neck. And then at the bottom of the scale here, you've got infinity. So what I'm getting at here, my point is, focusing accurately with this is uh, nigh on impossible. Let's go reshoot this at infinity, flipping Nora. God, I was, I was waving, I had another problem with the camera, I was waving my hand to see where I was in the frame and uh, yeah, fired off a shot. The, uh, the shutter release button is in an awkward position where you can easily accidentally press it as I have just so beautifully demonstrated. So if you do manage to nail your focus and perfectly frame your composition using the viewfinder, you're, st <laughs> you're still kind of at the mercy of the camera. The camera's metering system is here. So it's metering the ambient light from where you're shooting and not your subject. That's like checking the temperature of the swimming pool by dipping your toe in the sink. Now there is exposure compensation on this camera, so you do have a little bit of control but you still have to guess whether or not the camera is going to meter perfectly well in which case you leave it at neutral whether it's going to underexpose the scene in which case you dial in one stop of compensation and if you think that the camera is going to overexpose the scene then you can dial in minus one stop of exposure compensation so ah, i'll be honest with you it's pretty much entirely guesswork now, of course, you can wait five or 10 minutes, check your Polaroid or your Instax, and then you can see if it's over or underexposed and then reshoot. But the thing with this camera is, it's a, I find it as a very reactive camera. It's something you would have whilst walking about. It's not something you wanna shoot, wait 10 minutes, check the image, it kind of negates the point. And as well as that, it's one pound 10 per image, one pound 10 per image. In the USA, that's $1.30, and in Europe, one euro 30 so it's expensive not really money you want to be throwing away on images that uh, are probably soft probably over or underexposed and probably not framed correctly <laughs> bye bye one pound ten i've got to say though yeah all the whinging and moaning all the negatives aside it's blooming good fun. So as I mentioned before, which is one of the most important things, this camera is incredibly good fun. And that's important with your photography to get out there, have fun, experiment, try new things, get creative and just have a laugh with it really with no expectations. So that's, you know, that's the main reason for getting this camera. But I think this, is a particularly striking camera. I think, oh God, I've done it again. <laughs> I've done it again. So all of the negatives aside, and there are many of them, like what's the point? Like why am I out with this camera? And I think ultimately it's to try and improve my photography. If, as I've mentioned before, if, if I can nail an awesome shot with this, even if it's one in a hundred, then uh, the, the amount of pride and satisfaction I will get from that will be incredible. And it, you know, it could, could well, you know, imagine having a portfolio, a good varied portfolio, and in that portfolio is an Instax or two. I think that's pretty cool. But more importantly, this helps me develop and train my eye, helps me with my photography, because when it comes down to it, all you've got with this camera is shape, form, and composition. That's it. There's no real texture. There's no detail. There's no Photoshop manipulation. There's no sky replacement. There's nothing. Just shape and form. So if you can train yourself and begin to work with this camera and create excellent images, imagine 
what will happen when you apply that to your regular photography. Terrible, worst thing I've ever shot. What was I thinking? Where was my focus? Awful. <laughs> Terrible. So at a quick glance, I'm, I'm happy with one of those shots. One out of 10. And let me tell you, best of a bad bunch as well. Um, but let's go back to the office, look at them in detail, and look at all of the other images I've taken. So I've had this camera for quite some time, and I thought now I was ready to make this video. So back to the office. In fact, I'm not even going to do all the driving B-roll. Can't be bothered. Let's just go back, look at the good stuff. Yeah? Yeah. So that was pretty typical of what I would expect from a, a little outing with this camera here. It's, uh, yeah, there's a few mistakes, um, a few misframings, a few overexposed, a few underexposed, and ultimately from a box of Instax film, I've got about one image. Now let me show you something. So I've been shooting with this camera for quite some time. And this, this is my stack. My stack of unsuccessful images taken with the Instax. Now let's look at the stack of successful images. Not great. You can see that the difference in thickness there. Uh, these are the ones I consider to be somewhat successful. Not successful, but somewhat what I was going for. Uh, these, not so much. So we're gonna dive into all these images. We'll look at the successes. We'll look at some of the failures and we'll see why uh, and basically what, what's working and what's not. Now, before we get into that lot, I just want to remind you that every single year I release a landscape photography calendar. I have done since, well, since I began on YouTube, pretty much. I mean, it's a massive, it's probably my biggest, like, support for the channel. So I do it every single year. It's my images from the previous year or so. And this year, I think, is my best calendar. And I'm not just saying that. I know you say that every year. But it is. The images in it I'm, I'm so incredibly proud of. But more than that, if you pre-order the calendar, Calendar. Not only will the calendar be hand signed by yours truly, um, obviously, um, but I'm going to include a print. Now the calendar is about A3 in size. It's a good size calendar, a proper wall calendar. And the print is going to be similar size or certainly cut from A3. So I'll slot that in there. But if you pre-order my 2023 calendar, wait for it, just get this. If you pre-order my 2023 calendar, within the next 48 hours of this video going out, you will be in with the chance of your calendar having included in it an original, a one-off, one-of-a-kind, Instax, Polaroid, instant film thing shot by yours truly, me. And not only that, because most of them are gonna be uh, from this pile, which is the, the dud pile, um, I'll be making, writing little notes on them. A little note, you know, explaining perhaps what went wrong. You know, like, like this one here, for example, accidentally pressed shutter. You get me? So uh, just a little one so that all of the orders, all of the pre-orders, should I say, that are made from now until the next 48 hours, they will be put into, into a random thing. And I'm just gonna... So let's look at a few examples as to why this massive stack of Polaroid it's, whoa, oh dear me, all failed. All right, so it's not all camera related. This image here, just generally, I didn't like the composition, but most of the time it's camera related. This one is overexposed quite a bit. Of course, it's impossible to judge because of where the light meter is on the camera. This one, really like this shot of a, of a lone figure crossing a zebra crossing in the mist. Uh, but unfortunately, you can see the framing is off as this lamppost here, this bit of the zebra crossing, is just just too close to the edge. Um, and that, again, is the, the framing issues with the viewfinder. The Lomography Square camera cannot photograph snow because the, uh, the shutter speed isn't quick enough. Of course, the film is, I believe, ISO 800, so that doesn't help. Here's a lovely picture of Monty, my dog, and this one is out of focus. I tried to judge it using the focus markings on the front of the uh, lens, but couldn't do it. That is a blurry pooch. And I got double exposures. <laughs> Man, if I can't take a single exposure, I can't do a blooming double. But it's not all bad. It's not all bad. And there have been some successes. And I have to say that when you get one of these successes, it feels great. It really does. So let's look at the images, although a very thin pile. Let's have a look at these and see why they've worked, or at least why I think they've worked. 
This was my one successful image from the shoot of those dead trees in that swampy area and the reason I quite like this image is the exposure is perfect. You might not be able to tell from this video but there is great detail in the sky and all of the shadows with no highlights blown out as well as that the framing is spot on and the subject matter works so well for this medium of photography. What's not to love about this image? A lone dog walker on a misty beach. And I think that is the key for this camera. Minimalist scenes with a strong single subject and a recognizable shape. This image was taken from a moving train in Norway, which seems to give it a bit of a strange sketch quality. I'm not quite sure what it is. Perhaps it's the glare on the glass. Perhaps it's that nothing is truly sharp, but the identifiable shapes of the trees and the fact that the frame is broken in half by the trees, the horizon and the top. And at the bottom, we have the horizontal train tracks. The whole thing for me, I don't know, it has something about it. Here we have another image from Norway. This one was taken in Trondheim and these trees really struck me, the way that they were silhouetted against the modern architecture I thought would work as a great subject for this Instax camera. Because this camera lacks any kind of detail, it's best to go out in conditions where you don't need detail, such as a foggy evening where the street lights give off a beautiful glow. And this photograph of traffic lights is definitely one of my favorites. Now, what I should say about this image is I actually used a tripod because I knew the camera was gonna give me a long exposure which could not be handheld. So what I'm getting from this camera is that minimalist scenes seem to work well, especially if you have contrast and a single subject, something that is instantly recognizable like this street lights. Now, admittedly, if there was an old man in a trilby stood underneath this light, well, I think we'd be winning some sort of award but I can take this as it is. So there you go, I did manage a few successes with this camera, the Lomography Square. Now admittedly, yeah, most of them are just absolute tosh, but you know, some of them I'm really proud of, like this traffic lights in the fog and this lamppost in the fog. I'm really, really happy with these. And hey, these could even end up in your calendar if you pre-order in the next 48 hours, so that's pretty cool. But all in all, you know, it's about having fun. It's about exploring your photography and trying to see things in a different way. And this camera definitely helps facilitate that. Would I recommend it? Well, I wouldn't specifically recommend this camera, no. I, I, don't really care much for this camera, but the process, the, the instant film, the way that it pops out the top, the way that you can't process it, you can't edit it, you can't do anything, you get what you get is so much fun. Yes, quite expensive per print, so you know, one pound 10, there or thereabouts, but the cameras are cheap and um, yeah, I mean, if you have fun and you learn and you create and everything, then it's not that bad of a deal. And I don't go out and shoot it every day. It's reserved for special occasions. Thank you guys, that's it. That's today's video. I bet you weren't expecting a plumbing instant film video, were you? Well, we like to keep it fresh on this channel. Uh, but again, let me know in the comments what you think. And yeah, with a bit of luck, I will see you all next week. So thanks again for watching. And until then, bye for now.